Look at that. Yep, there's more. No. No, it's not always. Check, it, check this out. Everywhere we look, everywhere along the trail, it's just one giant carpet of poison oak. This is all poison oak. Leaves of three, man. Poison oak, poison oak, poison oak, poison oak, poison oak. Pick the biggest. Poison oak. Everything. Everything. Uh, just thought you don't know what poison oak looks like? Uh -uh. Really? Oh. I mean, it's not like you haven't heard of Dog Mountain. If you live in the Portland area, it seems like it's impossible to not have heard of Dog Mountain. The thing I don't understand, though, is why this trail is so popular. So let's find out why so many people are drawn to this place. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe and navigate to my Patreon page, linked in the description. The Dog Mountain Trailhead is located on the Washington side of the Columbia Gorge, about 55 miles east of downtown Portland. Hiking Dog Mountain as an out-and-back creates a round-trip hike of 6 miles with 2,800 feet of elevation gain to a summit that sits at 2,900 feet with clear views to the west over the Columbia River. This is a very steep and difficult, although relatively short, one sandwich hike. Make sure you bring trekking poles. There is a freeway, a state highway, and two train lines cutting through the Columbia Gorge so you don't come to this trail for quiet solitude. The parking lot fills up fast, and hiking permits as well as a parking permit are now required on weekends between late April and mid-June, the peak wildflower season, as this place has exploded in popularity over the last 15 years. You are highly encouraged to consider signing up for the shuttle from Skamania during this time as it gets your car out of this parking lot, and a hiking permit is included in the cost of the shuttle. Also, do not forget that a Northwest Forest Pass is, as always, a requirement to park here in addition to the other parking permits. Dog Mountain is a very well-traveled, heavily compacted hiking trail, and most of the people hiking it are here for the peak wildflower season, and I'll concede that it is pretty beautiful when the balsam root is blooming, but I still maintain that from my perspective as someone who's outside a lot, wildflowers are an attractive nuisance because I have to plan my trips to avoid the crowds they attract. There is a lot of poison oak on this trail. Seriously, don't take your dog on this trail unless you want to get poison oak burns from snuggling with your dog at the end of the day. Dogs are immune to poison oak, by the way. You, however, probably are not. You don't want to find out the hard way. Also, some people have severe reactions to poison oak, so for them, even your dog just brushing up against their legs could mean needing a course of steroid cream. So be a responsible dog owner. At least just this once, consider being a responsible dog owner. And Please leave your pet at home for this hike. There are also ticks in abundance, as well as cute little scorpions, a few rattlesnakes, and of course, biting flies when they're in season. Wear long pants, closed shoes, and bug repellent. The tread on this trail is well-maintained and generally about four feet wide. This trail gets a lot of attention, so the encroachment of vegetation from the sides is minimal, but do keep an eye out for poison oak, like I said earlier. The trail ascends a lot of switchbacks on its way up the mountain, and although it's well maintained, the tread is not appropriate for flimsy shoes. Wear decent footwear or you're not going to have a very good time. Expect a lot of traffic on this trail regardless of the time of day you hike it. Remember, you weren't the only person who had this idea, so don't get crabby about crowds when you yourself are part of that crowd. The first three or so miles of this trail ascends through a mixed vegetation forest of Douglas fir, scrub oak, and lots of underbrush, as well as the aforementioned poison oak. When you get to this intersection, you have a choice between difficult or more difficult. Take your pick, they're both horribly steep. Fortunately, you don't have to worry too much about the poison oak in these areas where the vegetation really encroaches, because the poison oak doesn't like these wet environments very much. Which is not to say that you don't still need to keep an eye out, it's a sneaky little devil. The forest down here is pretty, although it's not what you really came for, but the shade is nice, so enjoy the shade it provides on this climb. It's a very transitional forest, being kind of on the dividing line between the wet and dry sides of the gorge. But most people who live on the west side of the Cascades don't come to Dog Mountain for the forest, they come for the views, which finally happen as you break out of the forest at this little viewpoint. Notably, this is also the first place where you can look up at the summit and contemplate with great dejection on how much 
much farther you still have to climb. This is also the first place you'll encounter wildflowers, if that's what you're here for. But that was just a glimpse, because now it's back into the forest for a while as you encounter some of the steepest grades on this hike. This is where the trail is on such a steep and unsustainable grade that there's no way to keep the bench from eroding off the hillside. This is also where the biting flies were really starting to dive bomb at us. So, wear bug repellent. And right here is where the trail finally grudgingly breaks out of the forest for good and you start seeing the epic views and exposures you came here for, as well as more wildflowers if that's what you wanted to see. If you don't get out much, this exposure will take your breath away. It is fun to hang around and just listen to people's reactions when they encounter this view for the first time. Just got that line on my GoPro. That's going in the video. Comment of the day. <laughs> this little flat spot right here is known as Puppy Point. Get it? Dog Mountain, Puppy Point. Anyway, it's a good place to take a breather on your way up. Now that you're above the tree line, you can pretend you're part of the Von Trapp family fleeing Austria by hiking over the European Alps because that's kind of what this landscape looks like. You'll also likely encounter a lot of wind up here because the wind on this part of the mountain is so strong it has scoured the slope clean of trees. That's the only reason this is not forested, the intense wind. Believe it or not, I encountered someone wearing flip-flops up here. Don't be that person. There's no way she didn't have poison oak and bug bites when she got home. I can't even imagine what poison oak burns on your feet must feel like. And this is the view you came up here for, and this is also why, if you're smart, you'll plan your hike so you can either catch the sunrise or the sunset. It is a pretty, if somewhat obstructed view, but coming up during golden hour somehow does make it better. You can follow some social trails up here at the summit to partially obstructed views of Mount Adams, and there's kind of an obstructed view of Mount Hood from the top as well. There's also a partial view of Hood River if the atmosphere is clear enough to let you see it. You can hear the freeway all the way up here too, in case you were wondering. This place really is a wonder of nature, how it manages to sit at 2,900 feet over the gorge in the one spot where there's hardly anything you can see from that elevation. When we arrived at the top, a couple who were visiting from Washington, D.C. pretty well encapsulated my overall opinion of this hike in one phrase when they remarked, this is it? For the amount of work it was to get up here and the amount of people suggesting that you have to hike this and the amount of hype and fussing there is over this trail, the view sure is anticlimactic. You, you can't get any clear views of any of the high cascades from here. There are tons of hazards on the way up and down this, and it comes with the added hassle of crowds, permits, and shuttles during the one season it contains anything worth hiking to. I mean, it's not a bad little hike, it's just fine. It's, it's a nice one to hike every 10 years or so. Bring trekking poles. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, especially Damon Corey, Randy Relaford, Ty Morgan Marbot, Heather Van Valkenburg, Jason Moore, Pedro Cantorini, and Todd McCarthy, as well as this list of other Patreon supporters. If you'd like to join this list, navigate to my Patreon link in the description. Now, lace up your boots and go take a hike.